everybody calls me Banky, that's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Bank and Parent, man. I appreciate the love. Appreciate the support. We out here, man. We out here. 33 years of prison stories, man. Um, I appreciate everybody who been rocking with the stories recently. The short ones and the long ones. I try to, you know, mix it up a little bit now. I try to incorporate it. You know, uh, and appreciate everybody who been going over there rocking with uh, pure deliciousness. I appreciate the love, you know. So, you know, we're going to keep it rolling, man. I, this is just a video just because of some, what somebody said in the comments. I told you usually stuff come up in um, conversation that makes me remember things. But somebody had said something to me in my comments about uh, have I ever ran across any, uh, you know, ex-military or, 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 or special forces dudes and stuff like that. And it just made me think about the situation that I did. I remember, I remember, I did run into some, man. I ran into these dudes that are supposed to have been. I think they was from out Virginia Beach or something somewhere. It was two white guys, and they were supposed to be like Navy SEALs or something. And they had got into some type of altercation out there. I don't know. I'm trying to remember correctly whether it was some racist stuff involved or whatever. But they had got into some type of altercation out there. And they had ended up, you know, uh, beating somebody to death out there. So, you know, they was incarcerated. And I guess because both of them had, like, the same type of case or they was military or whatever, they housed them dudes together. And I, I can remember being in the block with them one time on Greensville. And um, one of them was a big, big, sturdy dude, man. He was kind of kind of muscular. The other one was short, kind of stocky, too, but he was a shorter dude. And... um. Both of them worked out every day. They worked out every day. I don't know if, you know, they was doing some Navy SEAL type stuff or whatever, but they be out there, man, on the yard. They be grimy. They be all in the dirt. They do a lot of different type of burpees and pull-ups. and They always stuck together. They were together everywhere. They was in the cell together. You know, they went to eat together. They, they was always together, you know. And um, they, like I said, when they went out on the yard, they always worked out. But... The dudes was weird, man. They was weird to me, you know what I'm saying? Just the things they do. Now, when you in prison, you see a lot of weird stuff. You see a lot of people being weird. So, you know, you get used to weird, you know what I'm saying? But it always see, be some type of different type of weird that you might see that might throw you off. And I can remember, man, the one thing that was real strange about me to them dudes, too, was even in the block, they would work out in the block together and, you know, in the party stuff because a lot of dudes do, you know, sometimes we don't get wrecked as much is you know what I'm saying we we won't wreck so wreck is only a certain uh, times a day that you are able to go outside wreck being recreation and sometimes they counsel wreck if they ain't got enough workers if they ain't got enough people on staff they counsel wreck so a lot of dudes you know they're supplement man whereas they stay ready they don't have to get ready they already be working out in the block like ain't nothing gonna stop they work out ain't nothing gonna stop whatever you know it just depends on how the people gonna run their institution and then how you gonna run your life so you got to be prepared to do anything and, you know, with whatever they do, they don't stop your flow. So even if they lock down, dudes already got a routine where they're going to be working out, they're going to be working out. You know what I'm saying? It, no matter what's going on, they're going to have something to supplement because, like I said, penitentiary, everything is uncertain. You don't never know. Something could be scheduled, but that don't necessarily mean that's what's going down. It's going to fall in the place the way they want it to fall in the place. It ain't, you know, what you want to do. It's always you got to adapt cope and adjust to whatever's going on in there because you ain't calling no shots. You can rest assured and believe that. That's why I tell y'all young fellas, you better stay free. If you enjoy freedom, it's a part of freedom of the mind, freedom of choice, freedom, freedom of having options. You know, when they take that away from you, literally, that's taken away from you. When you're in prison, you got to move the way they say move, how they say move, when they say move, and that's what it is, you know. So you, you, you need to get used to that if you plan on, you know, being out here, and acting like you are uh, Teflon Don and you can't go to prison, you know, because <laughs> uh, trust and believe me, all your choices is going to be taken away from you up in there. But anyway, like I said, they worked out in the block a lot too. 
But what was real strange about them was, man, when these dudes worked out, we got these things called state boots, right? Big old brown, uh, bro, 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 grands, bro, hams, bro, whatever you want to call them. We used, it's a funny name that we used to, that they used to call bro, hams, bro, grams, or something. I'm sure somebody out there know what I'm talking about. But anybody who ever been locked up know about these big old brown boots that we got. This, this is all they used to give us to wear. You know, they ain't giving us tennis shoes or nothing like that. They, they give these state boots. So these dudes used to say, work out, run, jog, go outside, do everything in their state boots. And, you know, when it's hot summertime, dudes got on shorts and they got on their shirts, the T-shirts. And I'm telling you, when these dudes go get in the shower, man, I don't know what it was about them, but they would go get in the shower. And one dude would stand on the outside of the shower while he, the other one got in the shower as if he, you know, his bodyguard or something watching him. But the dude would get in the shower and, and, and wash up and, and, and do all this with his state boots on, <laughs> his shorts on, his shirt on. I think they washing up under the shirt. They, I mean, they wouldn't take it off. They would be in there washing up like that. You know, I guess they washing up under their shorts. But they got the state boots on too. They would come out the shower and the other one would stand out there while the other one went in. And he would literally be standing in front of the shower, soaking wet, dripping, shirt wet, shorts wet, everything. And, he, and they would just, you know, air dry. You know what I'm saying? Air dry. I tell you, you can't make this up, man. He's standing there soaking wet, and dudes was getting mad at him, and dudes was saying little things because of the simple fact that they, you know, saying be leaving puddles or, or, or water everywhere. And then sometime when both of them finish, they'll go sit at the table and just sit there and start kicking it. You know, right there in the block, they'll sit at the table and start kicking it, and all of this water be draining up off of them, create puddles of water all around which, whichever uh, bench that they sit at, and dudes was saying stuff to them. But like I say, the, the, the older dude or the bigger dude, he always, you know, I ain't seen that one of them really conversating with nobody but each other. But the bigger one, when somebody would say something, whoever, he would always bark back. Like he he was basically letting you know straight up he won't skate. You know what I'm saying? He was letting you know he won't skate. Like, what? You know, that? Man, we're not bothering you. You know, stuff, you know, he would let you know that he he he, he ready for whatever. Now, you got to take in mind that in, in the penitentiary, man, you can be ready for whatever, but you can rest assured <laughs> whatever just might come. You know what I'm saying? You might have to produce that. You might have to show that, you know? So, um, yeah, he would always bark back. The other one always had like a scrawl, a grit on his face, you know? But like I said, you got these young dudes in there that just start doing time. They don't care nothing about that. They don't care nothing about that. They're going to try you, you know what I'm saying? And then they're going to they gonna push the limit. They're going to push the uh, envelope. And then especially on, you know, sad but true, then especially on the fact that because they're white, they're a white boy. You know what I'm saying? So they're looking at oh, a white boy. Oh, he's soft. He just that and the third. Ah, they don't all the time got to be the case. You see what I'm saying? So like I say, you can never judge a book by its cover, man, because you, you don't know what's on the pages. Now, like I say, I had heard about the fact that they were supposed to be in some type of like Navy SEALs or whatever. And I'm quite sure other people had heard it too. But like I said, it was a little, little something going on about it. Whatever their case was, it was something about some racism stuff too. You know, maybe some like some Nazi stuff or something like that. And that right there going to draw you a whole lot of attention too. And it's going to draw you a whole lot of heat because dudes going to want to know, I mean, what's up with that? You see what I'm saying? So... Like I say, eventually in the penitentiary, as I tell you always, you're going you gonna to have to produce. You're you going to have to prove that you are what you say you are. You're going to have to prove that you will do what you say you will do. You're going to have to prove this stuff. It ain't going to get away by word of mouth. Word of mouth might last for a little while, but overall, you're going to have to do something to show what's going on with you. And I can remember them young boys was arguing with them one night because they came out and they was walking across the floor with all of that you know what I'm saying, water dripping off of him, and one of the little young dudes slipped. So when he slipped, he was like, man, who put all this, man, y'all, you know, keep on walking across here with that stuff, man. And, 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 and the big one, he turned around, and he barked, he said, man, just leave me alone, ain't nobody bothering you. You know, he said, we can get, i get the water up. He said, uh, dude was like, man, you ain't keep getting the water up, you keep on bringing all that MF out here, that yap, 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 and just going at it, you know what I'm saying? So. The, the, the big white dude and the little dude, they just like was just standing on post in front of their cell, like, man, whatever, man, whatever, man. 
you know, whatever. So dude's like, what you mean, whatever? What you, I mean, what you saying? You know, so then his little homeboys, them come down there. You know, these young dudes, man, these dudes ran, these teens, man, 19, 20, 21 years old. You know, they straight out the hood. They, they, you know what I'm saying? They ready to shoot the bank to them. They get ready to, to bank these dudes in here. I mean, anybody who in there can see that. But the dudes is not acting like they scared at all. You know what I'm saying? They stay holding their position and barking back at them. So, man, the next thing you know, dude walk up on him and was telling him, I punch you in your face, man. He said, dude was like, you better not, man. You better not. I'm telling you, bud. I'm telling you. You better not. So he was like, man, what? What? So, man, next thing you know, he just, boom, he swung on him. And when he swung on him, man, <laughs> it won't pretty. It won't pretty, man. The white dude just went up on him and scooped the man and slammed him down to the ground and just started pounding him. And then two or three other, his little homeboys, they came running over there to jump in. And then the little one, he like football tackled one of them and drove him to the ground. And they just pounding. Dudes trying to hit him in the back while he fighting him. And man, they was rumbling in there, man. They was rumbling in there. It's about four, five of the little black dudes, you know what I'm saying, the little youngest. And they trying to, you know, bank these two Navy SEAL dudes. Man, but when you look at the situation, it was like the Navy SEAL dudes was really getting out on them. They was really getting out on them, man, because like I said, the one that they get on the ground, they be ground and pounding them, and then somebody come up behind them and start punching them, and they'll roll over and then grab that one, you know, because these were little young dudes, man, these little young dudes, that they ain't, you know, got no size on them, no strength or nothing, and half of them can't even fight anyway, <laughs> but they just think they can fight, but they can't even fight, you know what I'm saying, these dudes is trained, they trained to fight, they trained, they know what they doing. So they rumbling, man. I mean, of course, they get a couple of little bump, busted lips and everything like that because the dudes is hitting them. They catching them because it's, it's more of them than it is them. But, man, in the overall picture, man, them dudes, them, them, them two Navy SEAL dudes was getting them the business, man. They was getting them the business, man. But then the people, like I say, they seen in the booth. They call the code. People come running in there. Man, dude, they ran and grabbed stuff. One of the little young boys, he went and grabbed the, uh, the, the broom handle. Come, come over there trying to swing the broom handle to hit him. You know, dudes is grabbing stuff in there trying to fight or hit the dudes with stuff because they seeing that physically they can't really, you know, handle the dudes. And they trying to get their licks and stuff in or get what they can get in before the uh, police get in there. See what I'm saying? But they're young to the game. They're young and green, and they ain't paying attention. They, you know what I'm saying? The people that already said that these dudes was Navy SEALs, and then if you want to go with somebody like that, you got to go prepared. If you go into war, you go into war to win, and you don't leave no room for no error. You know what I'm saying? They should have went and got one of the Bethlehems <laughs> and went at them like that if that's how they was going to go at them, man, because these dudes was more advanced than them, and these some little youngins, and they don't even really know what they're doing. They think they know what they're doing, but they don't know what they're doing. And they could have got seriously seriously hurt because had they them dudes had some more time or oh, they would have subdued them they would have probably subdued all four five of them you know what i'm saying and, and, and put some real damage on you know because all of them got busted up to a certain degree all of them got busted up to a certain degree and like i say the, the white dudes had a couple of busted lips little, little stuff was going on with them too but for the most part Overall, they, they they basically, you know what I'm saying, would've, they would have they subdued them dudes if they would have been, been, been able to continue without the police coming in there and interrupting. But, you know, they come running in there like they do, bum rush the jump, get everybody locked down, everybody lock up, lock up, lock up. You know, they spraying their little mace, and, you know, when the mace come out, you already know what time it is. You know, everybody blind, everybody screaming and hollering and getting down on the ground or whatnot. But, yeah, them dudes right there, man, that, that came from underestimating them dudes, you know. And more or less, some dudes be like I say, you be you be a you be some dudes being paying attention, man, and they young and they like that, and they looking to get a reputation, man. And a lot of times they looking to get a reputation to keep the weight up off of them, you know, to let somebody know that look, I will do something, so don't come bother me. A lot of times that be the case. So they'll try to pick someone that they know that they can get out on, or they'll try to pick someone that they figure that they can they can beat and set an example. But they also will try to pick someone that, that got, you know, that might got a reputation or might got a little size. But they trying to pick and choose who they, hey, who they go at because they trying to get a reputation themselves. But the only reason they want a reputation is just to keep somebody off of them. But you got to be careful who you pick and choose, man, because you you run up on the wrong dude or you do something to the wrong dude in the penitentiary, man. It can cost you your life, and it ain't no get back from that. Period. It can cost you your life, man. 
and, and I done seen it happen, man. I done seen it happen. You try to vanish, take or take advantage of somebody or think they weak, and then you 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 in a world of trouble, man. I remember when I was on Greensville as well, man. It just made me think about that story, man. When the, um, I said something about this in one of my stories before too, man, about the dude, uh, Cowboy, man. You know, he he was he was gambling with the dude, man, every day, man, gambling with the white dude, and um, and he was losing and losing and not paying the white dude. And then not only did he not pay the white dude, I think he took he took some money from from the white dude and had the audacity to go and gamble the next day in the in at, sit at the table in the middle of the party and go gamble with the dude money, knowing that you done took the money from the dude. You know what I'm saying? So he looked at the, he played the dude for a week, man. And um, I'm gonna tell you, boy, you play somebody for a week in prison, it, I, I can say it can cost you. Yeah, that don't cost him his life, man. It cost him his life, man. It was it, it was crazy, cause he was sitting down there playing cards the next day with you know dude money and everything, any old dude money, and then he done took dude money at that. So dude know he did it, and he's sitting right there playing cards. He right in the middle, of, right in the middle of the. Uh, or, or, the, or the block at the first table right where the booth at. And right behind the booth is the microwave, the coffee pot and all of that where dudes, you know, go back and forth and get their stuff. So he's so bold and he done underestimated the dude so much that he feels so comfortable that he can do that, that he's actually sitting right there playing cards and he got his back to the microwave and right to the to the right side is is the, um right here is, is, is the booth, you know. So I guess I don't know because he feel like he, you know, he could do that or he built like that or whatever, and or the booth right there or it ain't nobody that bold or whatever to do nothing to him. Man, man, that white boy came up behind him and went to that microwave and he pulled that Bethlehem out and turned around and he hit Cowboy in the top of the head. One shot. Boom! Killed him. Killed him. Slumped right over off of the stool and just fell down with the, with the, with the jump stuck in his head, man. He killed him. He walked on back up to his cell, you know, people jumping up and moving and screaming and hollering, you know what I'm saying, not knowing what's going on. Dudes was getting ready to get at him, you know what I'm saying, trying to get him, you know, like, oh, man, look what he did, cowboy, look, you know, and then all the commotion just broke out and everybody is now, is in chaos in there, you know, so then the dude, he gets scared, the white boy, he gets scared, he tried to run to his cell to get in the cell because he don't want to get jumped, he don't want to get hurt, you know what I'm saying, and the people in the booth see it, and y'all know the rest, y'all know they call the code. They look down there, they see the man uh, slumped over with the thing in his head, see blood and everything, see people scrambling around, hollering and moving. They call the code, man. The whole junk got shut down. Whole penitentiary got shut down once they found out the dude was actually deceased. Whole penitentiary got shut down. Only thing that happened to the white boy I remember is a couple of dudes might have caught him and, you know, put a, hit a couple of shots on him or something like that. But he just basically warded that off and got to his cell. And by the time then, they closing all the doors anyway, so everybody getting locked in. But, you know, dudes just hollering and screaming, telling them, I'm a kid. You know, I'm going to get you. Away. You better check in. You better not come out the cell. I love it. Well, he ain't had to worry about none of that. You know what I'm saying? Because, like I say, dude actually passed away, so he had to face it even greater things than worrying about what somebody gonna do to him. Now, truth be told, I ain't never heard nothing about the dude no more. I don't know what, what, where he went or how, how much time he got for the actual murder, you know what I'm saying? But I do know the rest of his bit was already gone because just the fact that he killed the dude and then the dynamics in prison, you know what I'm saying, is different in prison. Like I say, you know, it ain't so much uh, like, uh, it's like, I don't know what you would call racism in prison. You know what I'm saying? But dudes do get it. It's hard in prison for everybody, especially young people. It's hard. But it's even more harder, too. I would say that in, 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 for, for you white guys or either younger white guys. Because you got all these dudes that's in here locked up and they most, of, most of the time they've been discriminated against all their life. So they feel like a white dude is locked up, then they try to carry him. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, that's just the dynamics of prison. You know, so... For a white dude to kill a black dude like that, and he he wouldn't have been able to come out on the yard nowhere. Everywhere he would have came out on the yard, his life would have been in, in, in grave danger. You know what I'm saying? So, but you know, like I say, he had bigger things to worry about now because he actually got a murder charge. You see what I'm saying? But all of that comes from underestimating, man. Underestimating somebody. You know what I'm saying? That could cost you your life. You know what I'm saying? 
white dude, black dude, young dude, old dude. It can cost you your life. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get a reputation off somebody or thinking that you can, you know, do this or do that or say this or say that. I remember a dude, man, an older dude, man, he locked up now, man. Shout out to Spook Dust, man. Spook Dust one of the oldest dudes locked up. That's one of uh, Bo Billy's homeboys. Shout out to Bo Billy. Bo Billy. It's, in, it's crazy because Bo Billy and Spook Dust is actually from the same, same city, man. I think both of them from P-Town. And both of them still is two of the longest... Uh, uh, reigning dudes has been locked up in the Virginia penal system that I know of. Spook does probably been locked up now about 51 years, you know, since he was a teenager. And we already know Bo been locked up going on 50, you know what I'm saying? So both of them locked up 16, 17 years old. And Spook Dust is a, is, a, is, a, is a go hard dude too, man. I guess they they build him like that out there in P-Town, man. Cause Spook does he goes hard too, man. And um, I can remember, man. Um, Spook Dust was on. Greensville, and like I say, he older now. He probably like Bo age, Bo 66, 67. So Spook does probably ran up in that age too, 67, 68. And I can remember, man, him being on Greensville, man, and, and um, him having some words with a younger dude. And the younger dude knowing about his reputation and hearing about him, but looking at him and judging him and probably feeling like he old now and he ain't like that. Or maybe I can get a reputation off him. Dudes be thinking that because they see dudes or hear about dudes being built like this or dudes doing certain things in penitentiary and get reputations. But then they get older, so they're thinking they can do something to them and it'll make them look bigger, make them look like they tougher. You know what I'm saying? Nah, bro. Big mistake. Big mistake. And, and what you say out of your mouth, especially in prison, can cost you your life as well. And I remember he said they had exchanged words or something, and he supposed to have said the spook does, man. Uh, yeah, that's what's wrong with you old dudes now. That's all y'all do, man. Get in penitentiary now. You, 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 you're supposed to be hard, and now y'all soft as I don't know what, and snitching and telling the, uh, the administration, the police, them, everything. So spook does, like, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, man. Who you talking about? He said, I'm talking about you. He said, man, you ain't never heard nothing about me telling nothing, man. You, you know what I'm saying? He was like, yeah, yeah, you snitching. All y'all old heads just snitching. You know, running his mouth reckless, reckless. You know, Spook does say, okay, all right, yeah, all right. He said, yeah, I know, okay. Like, he don't really, like, shut him down. But little do he know, that was that was the, that was the kiss of death right there because you can't say nothing like that to nobody who's been doing real time because you cannot assassinate their character without proof. And then you do that, that's, that, that's going to cost you. You know, and Spook Dust was just as calm as I don't know what. And then, man, the next thing you know, the next day, the next day, either was the next day or either that day. But he waiting there for him in the hallway. He waited for him in the hallway for, for, for coming back from chow, coming back from eat. And Spook Dust confront him on the stairway. So when he coming up the stairs and Spook Dust see him, and he coming upstairs and he sees Spook Dust and Spook Dust pull that Bethlehem out. Then his eyes get big as saucers and he turned around and was going to run back down the stairs. But Spook Dust had his partner with him. He been locked up a long time too. Shut up, Blunt. And Blunt was at the bottom of the stairs with the Bethlehem. So he couldn't go nowhere. So he stuck. You know what I'm saying? So Spook Dust said, man, what, what, what you say to me, man? What you say? What you call me? You know, and he like, man, well, no, no, no. And, man, Spook Dust got up on him. He tried to swing it, put it up in him, got it up in him. He got it up in him, and dude trying to hold his, hold his wrist and keep, keep him from pushing it in him. And Spook Dust got it up in him and just telling him, call me a what? I'm snitching? I'm snitching? And shoving it up in him, man. And he hollering and screaming, man. Hollering and screaming, man. And the only thing that really saved his life, man, was the fact that, Blunt tell him, come on, man, let's go, let's go. And he pull it up out of him and they leave and left him in that hall in, in that hallway right there on the stairway, man, leaking. You know, getting ready to die. Young boy, getting ready to die for saying the wrong thing out of his mouth to the wrong person. Getting ready to die. You know what I'm saying? And the only thing to say, like I said, then by this time, man, they got the cameras and everything. And you know, you always have a, a, on Greensville, they got an entryway officer that be down at the bottom of the stairway and he can look up in the stairway every time, every so often he go look up there from the outside, the windows is clear and they see him out there, they go get him, you know, they run the cameras back, you know, they go get spook dust, they go get blunt, both of them get locked up, both of them got cases and blunt only end up getting the case for holding them down. Blunt ain't actually do nothing, but that's, that's, the, that's part of the game. 
You know what I'm saying? That's part of the game. They always, they're going to stand behind each other just as much as dudes are stand behind each other that's in the game. The Bloods, the Cribs, the whoever. They're going to stand behind each other as well. Them dudes probably did 30 years together. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, Spook does got crossed up with that joint right there. And that's, you know, doing things like that going to occur sometimes because it may come at you and it's going to be you or them. But that's probably part of the reason why he been locked up so long. And he still go hard. He still go out. He still ain't playing no games. I was all the way in re-entry. I had just made parole. And I'm going to re-entry. But first you had to go to the um, the processing um, uh, uh, part first before you go to re-entry. You know, so I'm getting ready to, to come home, get out of penitentiary after 33 years. So I go to the processing jump and I'm in there. I got to stay in there about 17, 18 days before they send me to the re-entry block. So I'm up in there. And Spook Dust is, is, is in that joint sleep right, right beside me. You know, right beside me. But he been all up in the mountains for all these years. Only reason he right there is because he had to go have surgery, some type of some type of surgery. So Greensville got a medical facility. So they only transferred him from out the mountains to come there and there to have his surgery. Because he's scheduled to have surgery. So he's just in there for, for, for a little while. But He's still up in the mountains for what he did to, to old boy years ago. See what I'm saying? So that's what I'm telling y'all. You're going to pay either way. Even if you come out on the victorious end, meaning you don't get physically hurt, you're going to get physically hurt, mentally hurt, spiritually hurt, because they're going to try to break all of that. Because they're going to send y'all up in the mountains. You're going to be dragged. You're going to be up there with all these racist people. you probably going to be, he probably been in segregation for God knows how long. So it's, it's, it's a lose-lose game in prison, man. It's just a lose-lose game all the way around the board. You know, I can remember seeing Blunt up there at Wallace Ridge when I was up there at Wallace Ridge. And he was talking about, yeah, that's, that's what he still was up there for that. You know, so, yeah, that's how it go down, man. But, yeah, Spook Dust was in every inch of power with me. And something as small as he, he had took his food and put it in the microwave and pulled the food out of the microwave, sat at the table, ate his food, and then cleaned his bowl out. But he left his bowl on the table, right? And these are just little Tupperware bowls that you get to buy from commissary, but you got to purchase that. You know what I'm saying? About five dollars, six dollars. But somebody took his bowl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Somebody took his bowl because that's how petty dudes is petty in prison too. They might not got a bowl. You know what I'm saying? They spending their money on other stuff, doing food. It's always be them little young cats. They don't know how to manage their money. Don't know how to live by themselves. Always live with mama. But now you in prison. You got to, you know. You got to fend for yourself, and that includes fixing your own food, eating and all that. Some dudes ain't even ad adapted to that. They ain't even used to that. You know what I'm saying? So he, somebody took his bowl. He kept hollering and asking people, anybody get a bowl out here? You know what I'm saying? Anybody pick up a bowl that don't belong to him? It got spook written on it. Anybody got the bowl? Now, it ain't nothing but 80 people in the block, man. So everybody know you got it extra bowl or you got a bowl he got his name actually written on it you know what i'm saying on the bowl on the bottom and um uh that magic marker that don't that don't go away you know what i'm saying so he like anybody got the bowl so he hollering that for 20 30 minutes and don't nobody you know claim they got the bowl so now he go from asking to anybody and he's asking in a nice way that anybody mistakenly pick up a bowl that don't belong to them you know he's being specific you know what I'm saying? So once he keep asking and don't know about sin, then he turned to, he mad now. He angry because now he feel like somebody purposely picked up the bowl knowing it was his because his name was on it. And it's just somebody who don't like him, somebody who hate him, somebody who just want to, you know, mess with him. And now he, he want blood. <laughs> you understand me? He want blood. So he came out to the pod and he said, I'm going to say this one time and one time only. If you got my bow, you better not let me catch you with it. Because I don't care if somebody gave it to you or you got it on mistake. If I catch you coming to this microwave with my bow, I'm going to leave you right there beside that microwave. That's all I got to say. And he walk on off, you know. And dudes in there, younger dudes, I see dudes, they giggling and they laughing. Like, oh, you know, woo, woo. or they think it's a game. But the man was deadly serious, man. The man actually on the next cell break when they opened the doors the man actually had his chair over there sitting by the microwave waiting for watching everybody who go to the microwave looking at their bowls 
and seeing if he could see one that looked like his. And God forbid somebody would have walked to that microwave with a bowl that he thought was his. Because I guarantee you, he was going to give him that Bethlehem repeatedly. I guarantee that. You know what I'm saying? Without question, he was going to do it. He won't even ask no questions. You know? And this all the way when I was out of, getting out of the inch. So you're talking about now, you know, two, two years ago. Two years ago and something. And that's how he's still current because it's in his character and that's how he's going to do it. You know what I'm saying? That's how he chose to do his bit. And you know what I'm saying? Dudes will sleep on that and it costs you your life. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, these just a few things, man, that just I wanted to just drop on y'all because I had it on, you know, my mind at the time. And um, I had tried, excuse me, I had tried to upload the video yesterday and it didn't get right. So... I ain't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to recapture that video or re-get the video or not, but uh, I ain't even going to tell y'all what it's about, but I try to get it redone and get it to y'all. But in the meantime and in between time, man, just stay out of penitentiary, man, and you ain't got to deal with none of these type of issues, man. You wouldn't have to deal with issues that you have to deal with in prison out here on the street, you know. And like I say, some of these issues you never want to be confronted with or you never want to be dealing with. You don't never want to be staring in the barrel of a Bethlehem, somebody trying to, you know, stab you to death or somebody trying to take something that belong to you, take something that you rightfully earn, take something that you paid for just because they feel like they can or you weak and put you in a position to be took from for the rest of your time that you got to do if you don't do nothing about it. You see what I'm saying? You, you ain't got to really worry about that type of stuff. And you don't put yourself in a position to get tricked up off of these streets, man. So y'all young fellas out there, man, take heed, man. It ain't, it ain't nothing worth living like that. It ain't nothing worth being in there, man. Day after day, week after week, man. Month after month, year after year, decade after decade. Sitting in there when all you got to do is just make some better choices, man. Protect your life out here. Protect your freedom. And don't let nobody trick you up off these streets, man, because it's savage up in there, man. It is pure savagery up in there. So you don't want no parts of that, man, because I definitely didn't, and I definitely don't, you know. So salute to everybody out there on TBP, man. Y'all be safe out there, man. Be smart. Make good decisions, man. I just dropped this on y'all. I'll be back at you in a minute with some more 33 years of prison stories, y'all. Y'all appreciate the love out there, man. And duck that hook. Boom, 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 boom. Woo, Lord. Mm. Yeah. Mm. The bank is special. Yeah. Pure delicious. Pure delicious. Mm. My name is uh, Banky, man. Everybody calls me Banky. That's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years. Yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality. You know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.